the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 120, Proverbs 16 to 20. Victory of the yield. We need wisdom of knowing that true happiness of life is not in the quantity of our possession, but in establishing beautiful relationships with God and neighbors. First point, what we should do is to trust God in all that He does. To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The world teaches us that we must work hard and manage our time effectively in order to be successful. But Proverbs teaches us that God manages all and that although we are all different, God has a plan for each of us. Solomon teaches that birth, blessings, punishments, and death are all in the hands of the Lord. Therefore, if we think this is all down to us, we will never be able to receive God's blessings. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. To these people, God said, Come, let's go down and confuse their language, so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel. Because there, the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Second point. Humans cast lots, but the one to decide is ultimately God. The Lord is cast into the lab, but its every decision is from the Lord. There are lots of examples in the Bible where humans cast lots but God made the final decisions. One example is when the Israelites arrived in Canaan and they started to cast lots between the twelve tribes. This method was also used when choosing a king. Again, we see this when David chose the ones to sing in the choir. It happened also when Jonah was about to be swallowed by a fish. Another example is when they cast lots for the people who would live in Jerusalem. Casting lots was also used after the betrayal of Judas Iscariot, when the disciples selected the sermon in his place. As such, there are things that humans can do, but the ultimate decision is always made by God. Third point, calming down anger is more difficult then taking over a fortress. Back in those times, a true warrior was someone who fought ferociously and took over a fortress. But the Bible teaches that one who is slow to anger is the greater warrior. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. Therefore, Coming down one's anger is more difficult than taking over a fortress. We can see how God was slow to anger and fast to forgive. A person's wisdom yields patience. 
it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Solomon therefore taught us how to be slow in anger and not pick on other people's flaws. This was in order to follow God, and he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and the gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Fourth point, someone who takes care of others will do well in whatever they do and have the blessing of good health. The wise Solomon said, many carry favor with a ruler and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. Someone who helps another without any political or other intent is a truly kind person. The Bible states that God values such people. An example in the Bible of such a person was Bajilei, who granted David kindness in the time of difficulty. David did not forget this kindness and passed on blessing to Bajilei's son. Later on, the act of sharing and being kind was made into a festival called Purim. The Purim festival started with Esther and Mordecai to remember the day the Jews were saved as well as to make this day a day of kindness and sharing. Another person who showed kindness was Gaius, whom John thanked for his generosity towards the apostles and Christians. In AD 64, with the great fire of Rome, it became incredibly difficult for Christians to evangelize or even praise God. But a man named Gaius offered his house for the Christians and apostles to sleep and rest, and also provided them with funds on their way. John wrote to Chaos, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to work in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are working in the truth. We should also try to act like chaos. Fifth point, having compassion for the poor lends to the Lord. Solomon said, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Solomon emphasized that God's eyes are always on the poor and the weak. God's laws in a kingdom of priests is centered on looking after the weak, the widowed, the foreigners, and the orphans. God called the act of looking after them holy. God promised that if we looked after the weak, he would reward us. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tong Doc Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does. The way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation. One story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tong Dot Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly 
who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life, 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel the healing that comes from mouth to mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.